Yo, what's going on guys, it's Cryptic TMJ. we're back with a brand new video and today I'm going to be showing you guys how you would set your car up for in a long endurance race where you've got driver swaps and stuff like that. Pretty tricky to get your head around everything because there is so much things you actually have to practice for when you're doing an endurance race. So I'm going to sort of break it down into segments, the things you should be looking to do and how you're going to get the best out of your race because it's not so much about pace, it's about consistency and being well prepared for all the eventualities that could happen in a very very long race so let's get stuck into the video so i'm going to be using the ferrari 296 for this demonstration and i'm going to use this this iron brew the iron brew livery i don't know who made it someone in aor made it i think it looks pretty cool so i'm using it i so shout outs to whoever made delivery but i'm using it for this video so um yeah so we're going to use the ferrari we're going to do it around spa because that's where most of the big endurance races happen most of the long endurance races and let's say we're gonna you know set the car up for a 24 hour race and um you know get into how we get the best out of the whole package because you're going to be driving with maybe three or four drivers maybe even five so let's see what we do to make sure we're getting the best setup we can so first thing first i'm not going to be making a pacific setup but i'm going to show you guys what you need to do if you are setting up for an endurance race and First thing you need to do is you need to grab your tire pressures and that's probably going to take, I would say, you want to do about five consistent laps where you're pretty much pushing around the track and all the drivers in the team have to do that. So if you've got four drivers, five drivers, all of you guys have to do five laps and get your individual tire pressures because everyone has different driving styles. Some pressures may differ. So you want to make sure that, for instance, in the race itself, when you swap over to another driver, each driver has their individual pressure. So once you've done your five laps, you need to either write your pressures down. Um, for me personally, I would just use like Motec. If you're on console, I, what I would suggest is to record your five laps so you can look back at your, your average temperature over the lap. Then, you know, you can put your tire pressures in. And each individual driver needs to have their own tire pressures done. That's for whenever there's a pit stop in the race, you know your tire pressures you can say to the guy on track i need my pressures at this 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 and this so whenever you get into the car the pressures are perfect for you because as i said not everybody drives the same some people put in more steering angle they use more of the tire so you kind of want to make sure that is the first thing you get out of the way make sure your tire pressures are good um because that that has been a problem for me in the past or when we've done an endurance race where we've just set the tire pressures to whoever practiced and that's it and not saying only one person would practice but we'd make a setup whichever whichever setup was the quickest we'd use that and we'd use that tire pressure then when it comes to the race because we drive differently sometimes you know you're overheating the tires or sometimes you're you're under the limit and you know not getting as much of the tire as you want so make sure you do that as your first step now the next thing that i would focus on is actually making your setup towards the weakest driver in your team and i know that might sound a bit crazy but at the end of the day it's a, it's a team result and you sort of need your weakest link to be as comfortable as possible you need to get them into an environment where they're able to produce at their best and be at their most comfortable because at the end of the day in an endurance race most of your result is going to be you know down to who what team makes the least amount of mistakes and there's no point in having a driver that is super fast on your team drives an extremely edgy setup who's more advanced he can handle those sort of setups but then as soon as you pass the guy to pass the car to someone who's a little bit slower they end up binning it or putting it in the wall struggling with the car sliding all over the place just making general mistakes because they're finding it tough to drive that's not sort of the environment you want to put somebody in because you're likely going to end up in the pit lane a lot of times because you're going to end up fixing damage all the time so make the setup towards the slowest guy to make him as comfortable as possible you want your drivers to be as close as they can be so making the weakest link as comfortable as possible so he can produce his best drive is probably the way to go a fast driver is going to be able to drive anything fast you know so even if you have to add wing to your setup or you have to, you know, just make it generally a bit more safe. That's what you should do. Just make sure, you know, you're thinking about the whole race as a whole, not just one or two stints where 
you might just want to be rapid. Remember, in an endurance race, the weather can change. You can get rain. As you go to nighttime and the temperatures drop, the feeling of the car is going to change. So you need to make sure that the car is stable. The car is useful for all of the drivers, not just the fastest driver, because that's mistakes that we've made in the, in the past, man. I remember me, Prenter, and Dowking, we did a, a race at Laguna Seca in the BMW, and um, Dowking made a setup, and he was rapid. But me and Prenter struggled massively. So in the end, we didn't, as a team, <coughs> sorry, we didn't, as a team, we didn't maximize all of our performances. So we weren't as quick as what we could have been if we had made a few changes to make sure that we could all sort of push to a certain limit. Obviously, I don't think we would have been as fast as Dow King in that car anyway because he was rapid, but we could have definitely made the performance closer and that way the team as a whole would have produced a, a better result. I think we end up DNFing because <laughs> like the car was just so hard for us to drive. Um, and that's what I'm talking about. At the end of the day, um, it's likely that when you when you don't sort of subsidize your setup for the weakest driver, it's likely they're going to make a mistake. And it's horrible making a mistake in an endurance race. And after that mistake, handing over the car, knowing you've got to get back in, and all you can think about is, oh, I don't want to make another mistake again. And then that way you've put, you end up putting a lot of pressure on maybe one person in the team. And that can be tough, man. That can definitely be tough. So what I would always say is definitely make the setup towards the weakest person, make them as comfortable as possible and make it so they can they feel like they can push with the setup. And if that means you have to make it a little bit safer and even a little bit slower, then so be it. But it's probably the right way to go. Now, the next step is, guys, is to do your due diligence because you may need a wet setup for the race. Now, me personally, unless the endurance race is going to be majority wet, always go with the setup you've already got but just test your dry setup just to make sure that it makes sense so again if you if you know there's a chance of rain or let's say the race is going to be like 50 50 wet you have to decide whether you're going to run sort of softer setup so it's going to be a little bit more friendly in the wet or maybe you you might run something stiffer for the dry you have to sort of decide in between those sorts of things where to be honest at the moment everyone is pretty much running the damper super soft anyway so shouldn't have to make too many changes man from experience what i would say is don't go either way don't go into a full wet setup or a full dry setup because the likelihood is is you're going to come unstuck we've done it in the past um as a race me printer gold saw and nico i think we had an insane setup in the dry but we knew a lot of the race was going to be wet so we went for a proper wet setup and it literally ruined our race because and the portions of the race where it was driving was so slow. So just make sure you're you're setting up your car a little bit towards the other condition. Maybe if you need to add like one click of downforce or something like that, don't go too drastic with it. But make sure your setup does work in both conditions because, you know, a lot of people may tend to prioritize one condition instead of the other. Just make the car as neutral as possible. That's really what you want the whole setup to be. Pretty neutral, easy to drive, so everyone can get along with it. Um, again, you're going to have to do your due diligence in terms of wet pressures. You probably are never going to be able to get the exact pressures because when you're practicing, it's not the same as when you're in a full lobby with 40 plus cars that are, you know, cleaning up a lot of the, the, the water off the circuit. So just get in the, in the ballpark of the, the, the wet pressure so you kind of know. So... You can adjust it manually on the fly if you need to, but don't just go into a race without practicing all all of the um, possibilities because in endurance races, man, it only takes one mistake, one or two mistakes, and before you know it, you're a lap down. And it's, you know, at the top level, very hard to regain positions and get back towards the front if, you know, if you don't have a, a, a bad sort of decision that ruins your race or whatever. Also, guys, make sure you're picking the right brake pads for the race because depending on how long the race is, you don't want to be stuck on the wrong brake pads. You don't want to be doing like a six-hour race and you've picked brake pads one, which means you, you have to change your brakes. A six-hour race, which is a, a much longer pit stop. Make sure you're on the right brake pads. Anything, I think, above 12, you realistically, you want to be on three brake pads. And um, I, I do believe you still have to change your brake decks. I can't can't be sure but i think you still have to change your brakes in a 24-hour race even if you use brake pads free um 
but I'm pretty sure that's what most people do or do they run three two it's between three and two but I know for for the most part when you're doing 24 hour races you're gonna have to sort of change your brakes halfway through anyway so um remember that you really don't want to be on brake pads one or brake pads four for any at really long distance races so make sure you don't make that mistake and finally the last thing I will say is when you are doing an endurance race from my experience um I normally would say let the fastest guy start the race because he's more likely unless obviously he gets taken out he's more likely to put you in a better position earlier on rather than having to fight back through which is a little bit harder to do because you could get stuck behind someone who's got a car that's rapid on a straight so realistically put your best guy in first um even if you know even if he has to do like two back-to-back -back stints before i used to be like yeah i'll do an hour you do an hour i'll do an hour you do sometimes it's best to just get get your team off to the best start you can even if someone has to do like two hours back to back or, or an hour back to back just get just get your team in a good position so you can build off of that good start obviously things can happen you can get taken out all those sorts of things and obviously that completely will go out the window it doesn't really matter who starts because that can happen but for the majority of the time i would say put your best guy in first let him do his work in the early stages of the race and then that way you guys have got a platform to then consolidate your position obviously slower people may come into the car and then you might be getting overtaken by other teams who have got like a faster lineup or whatever but at least you're already in the most advanced position that you can be in instead of being let's say the guy who's the second or third fastest starts and then he gets swallowed up at the start and then by the time the fastest guy has to get into the car he's got to fight his way through he's got to be battling with people that's where you're going to have more incidents and stuff like that so for me always put the fastest guy in first um only other tips i can think of is in the in the pit stops for instance when you are changing driver probably about five seconds before the car is handed to the to the new driver you want to start the engine because it makes the pit stop a lot more seamless and it doesn't have that sort of delay of acceleration when you have to start the car and then go you get the car's literally already started for you you just have to put your foot in the accelerator and it just goes straight away as soon as the the countdown time is finished so that's the only other thing i would say make sure you're starting the engine for the guy after you about five seconds before um the car switches over but other than that guys that's pretty much all my tips for endurance races hope this helped you guys out cryptic tng like and subscribe hit the notification bell to catch my videos first and peace